Hey guys, if you are a 90s kid, I know you always had a fascination with having a car with a power window, power holding mirrors and of course sunroof. It was like a luxury for us. Well, this time we are going to see what type of electronics go in these systems. So let's start. In modern automotive applications, there are at least 30 relays used in a car. All the fascinating features in the car such as power windows, folding mirrors, sunroof, seat control and many such systems work on a simple DC motor. We control and drive these motors according to the features requirement. These relays control all sorts of motors in the vehicle because driving a relay is very simple. However, compared with a relay, BOSFETs are way superior in noise, service life, size and reliability. So using MOSFETs instead of relays is always a better option. Also, the relays cannot control the current of the motor. So we might still need a MOSFET for precise control against current changes. Controlling a motor is attained by an H-bridge network. The H-bridge, also known as full bridge, is a switching network consisting of four control switches which are MOSFETs or IGBTs and is capable of creating a bidirectional current and reversible voltage across its load. This function comes in handy while driving a motor because it allows a change in the direction of its rotation and if application allows it, even to use it as a generator. The edge bridge is made up of two hub bridges used simultaneously. The motor is connected at the junction of these MOSFETs. Let's see the difference between edge bridge and half bridge motor drive. The edge bridge allows the motor to work as a generator in both direction of rotation. Therefore, it is considered a four quadrant converter. The half bridge is capable of driving bidirectional current but not reversible voltage and thus it is considered a two quadrant converter. Therefore, the hub bridge is mainly used in motor drive applications with single direction motors such as oil pump and small fans. There are multiple ways to drive an edge bridge network with numerous driving ICs and logic. The easiest way and most popular way to drive a DC motor using an edge bridge is by using pulse width modulation. Here the MOSFETs are switched at a constant frequency with a control signal having a variable duty cycle. This allows the average voltage across the motor to vary and also control the rotor angular velocity. The MOSFETs in an edge bridge can be switched in different sequences to provide desired voltage polarity. There are two common modes to do so the bipolar drive and unipolar drive. The bipolar drive allows two MOSFETs to be switched on at a time. For example, when Q2 and Q3 are turned on, the motor runs in the forward direction. Whereas, when Q1 and Q4 are turned on, the motor rotates in a reverse direction. By switching these two pairs, the direction of the current can be controlled. The speed of the motor is also controlled by providing PWM to these MOSFETs simultaneously. The timing is very important. The motor is an inductive load and as you all know, inductor doesn't like change in current. You can check more about the inductive load switching using MOSFETs in this video. Well, whenever there is a change in the current, this motor induces flyback voltage or back EMF. So, if there is transition between forward motoring to reverse motoring, a dead time must be introduced where all of the MOSFETs are turned off so that the flyback voltage generated in the motor flows back to the supply via body guard of the MOSFET. When there is a forward motoring, Q2 and Q3 are turned on and the voltage across the motor would be plus VDC. After that, during the dead time, the current of the back EMF wants to flow the same path, so it flows to the body guard of the MOSFET Q1 and Q4. 
But now this time, if you see the polarity across motor, that would be minus VDC. Now when there is a reverse motoring, Q1 and Q4 are turned on, the voltage across motor is minus VDC. And during that time, the current flows to the same direction, but Q1 and Q4 are turned off, so it flows to the body diode of the Q2 and Q3. Hence the motor terminal voltage would be plus VDC. The important point is that all of the MOSFETs are turned off during the dead time. This dead time delay can go from 7 nanoseconds to around 5 microseconds. So it will limit the switching frequency of the edge bridge to only up to 20 kHz. Even a longer dead time may cause a non-linear output with respect to the PWM and low efficiency. If you want to reduce the dead time, we should know the input parameters of the MOSFET which we are using. A longer dead time will be required for our device which has large gate charge. The voltage across motor terminals goes from plus VDC to minus VDC during each motoring application. That's why this driving technique is called the bipolar drive. So due to this voltage difference, we get more ripple current. The next driving technique is quite different which is called the unipolar drive. Just like the bipolar drive, the current flows diagonally during the motoring application but the control of the MOSFET is quite different. The current keeps on flowing during the motoring application by keeping one MOSFET on all the time and switching the other diagonal MOSFET at a time by providing PWM to it. This drive allows the motor to spin in a forward or reverse rotation direction, depending on the pair of the MOSFET selector and the polarity of the motor. Let's see how a forward motoring works in this case. We turn on MOSFET Q2 and provide PWM to Q3 when we want control speed, keeping the MOSFET Q1 and Q4 off. The current flows to the motor and it rotates. When we want to change the direction of the motor or the motor is supposed to be stopped, the MOSFET Q3 is turned off. As there is change in current, the motor will try to force the current from body diode of the MOSFET Q1. In this driving technique, the voltage across the motor doesn't go to minus VDC. So the motor voltage goes from plus VDC to zero and again zero to VDC or in the case of reverse motoring application, it would go from minus VDC to zero and zero to minus VDC. That's why this driving technique is called the unipolar drive. Due to that, the ripple current in the motor would be way lesser than the bipolar driving technique. To select a MOSFET for such an application, we have to consider the power dissipation across it, which is caused by three things, conduction, commutation, and body diode conduction. The conduction power loss occurs when the MOSFET is on and this loss is because RDS on of the MOSFET. Commutation loss occurs during the time when the MOSFET state changes from turn on to turn off. And finally, body diode conduction occurs when the current flows to the body diode of the MOSFET. The input capacitance of the MOSFET should also be very less if our edge bridge is being used for fast switching application. Well, that's all about an edge bridge driving technique using MOSFETs. I have added all the references related to these circuits in the description. If you have any query, you can ask me in the comment section or email me. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.